this one. Yeah, that's nice. I like how some of the uh, the polyps are closed. Yeah, just those couple. I've had a nap. No. Live tip from the chat. Uh, simple glue works for fiberglass and cactus as well. Um, yeah, but glue also, like when it dries on your hand, you might not like get it all off in one rip, and it's not as not as easy to work with. But hey, you use what you got. Yeah, we usually always have duct tape around. At least that's that's me anyway. Find it very useful. Do so many things with duct tape. I prefer a nice masking myself, but duct tape. Oh, I also had this thing with electrical tape when I was younger. I loved electrical tape. <laughs> you don't love it anymore? I do. I just, like, I understand that it has its place. <laughs> and that's not everywhere. <laughs> I've, we've got a new sponge. Zoom in on the new sponge, please. All right. Um, well, it looks like hyalonema corinonema. Uh, but I don't see that uh, that attachment. Thanks. So it might be something else. It could be a rosellid. I saw something that looked like this on a shipwreck, um, and we weren't quite sure what it was. But it looks really nice and soft and squishy, Ooh. like like a pillow that you might have on your couch. Got a suggestion for a subsea hero name, the Coral Crusader. I think that would be Steve, though, wouldn't it? Yeah, I think yeah. that's more more Steve. He's a Coral Crusader. I thought I was the fact lady. You are the fact lady. Or the amazing annotator. That's her. Uh, that's her land title. Ah, uh, a job. That's the Clark Kent of her <laughs> superhero. Even her Clark Kent name is an awesome name. <laughs> All right, I should go the right way. Here's a question. How come that sponge wasn't on a stalk? So do all sponges have stalks? Um, no. Can you cycle power to that light again? Uh, a lot of the sponges that we're seeing uh, have stalks, but uh, a lot of them don't. Sure, so yeah. we have vase-like sponges. We have, so I was looking through our guide, and, and that sponge that we were just looking at looks a lot like this sponge that we were calling Euplectelidae Potbelly, because uh -huh. yeah, it's a really cute name. Um, so yeah, that, that's an unstock sponge. You have sponges that are leafy, you have sponges that um, grow in all sorts of forms. Uh, I've seen some sponges that look exactly like corals from far away, and then you zoom in, you're like, oh, that's not a coral. Sure. Which is really tricky. Gonna, yeah, hold here. Especially when you have corals in the community that look exactly like the sponges that look like corals. And you're like, well, which one is it? You never know. Did you say you have sponges that look like the coral that look like sponges? Yep. That's rough. It is rough. How do you annotate that? How do you annotate that? That's a question for you. <laughs> yep. It is a question for me. Uh, <laughs> it's really difficult when you can't decide which phylum the thing belongs to. A uh, quick Thanks. question. What is the pressure at this depth? My math says like 3,000 PSI. Sounds right to me. Ish. The auspicious annotator. Ooh. <laughs> Oh, sponges seem like a very diverse class of animal. So, what makes a sponge a sponge? Yep, they are. They're very diverse um, in their morphology. Their morphology can be pretty plastic. So, um, you'll have a lot of different, a lot of the same sponge, 
that looks different, that grows a little bit different, um, and they can grow to best suit their environment a lot of the times. So you'll see sponges that might be next to something, and they'll just like grow to be uh, a shape that fits with the environment that they're in. Um, but what makes them a sponge is uh, that they are an animal that is made up of cells. Uh, these cells are slightly differentiated, but they don't have uh, internal structure. So uh, what the sponge does is it filters water through its uh, main body mass. Uh, and that, mat that body, that skeleton is made up of spicules. And in the case of glass sponges, those spic spicules are made of glass. So sponges are animals. They are in the kingdom Animalia. Some people might say that sponges are a more primitive form of animal, but I think that that's just uh, sort of a misunderstanding. They're not necessarily primitive, but they might have been one of the first types of animals to evolve uh, because uh, they don't have the sort of complex inner workings that, um, say, chordates have, like fishes or people. Um, and we tend to think of ourselves as very s sophisticated. Uh, so anything that doesn't seem nearly as complicated as us, we, we usually refer to as being, you know, more primitive. But in, in my mind, I think these sponges are, are quite fascinating. Uh, they have evolved to be really good at what they do. And what they do is provide a habitat for other animals. They filter water. Um, they're very successful in the environment in which they live. So another question from the chat. Could that stalk grow a sponge if needed? Or is the sponge just how it is going to be? Um, no. no. So uh, they, if that sponge doesn't normally have a stalk, it's not going to grow one. Oh, look, a siphonophore. Oh, no, it shed a little red thing. Oh, yep, that was a little gastrozoid. It jumps ship. Look at the way it pulses as it swims. Ship. That's cool. So we've got another dense community on this, in, on a rock. Look at that yellow base top right. Oh yes, that is the S1 clade uh, Caratoise citidae. So we're seeing oh. uh, a couple different varieties bonk. of bamboo coral. Still bonk. But this is we've I think we've seen S1 on each seamount. So it is quite widespread on the seamount chain. So I've got a question about the oxygen saturation here, and I would usually say go to nautiluslive.org and click more data, but uh, that's not working for me, so I'll have to check into that. Um, our Rafana says oxygen saturation is at 16.6%. The oxygen is at oxygen is at twenty. That's uh, this. that's the uncorrected one. Oh, the uncorrected one. I've got the calibrated one. I do not have the calibrated one. Yeah, so we're probably yeah. approaching a little bit of a oxygen minimum zone. You can see yeah, that lower down, uh, the concentration was higher. I can only give you the oxygen content in micromoles per liter. That's corrected, and that's seventy-one point two. How is it corrected? What's it corrected for? Um, they just like scale it and it it varies. It's dependent on different things. Um, but it's it's kind of a small scaling. It's, you know, changing from like eighty uncorrected to like sixty or something. Okay, not that not that big, but, but is that like dependent on the calibration of the thing or is it dependent on depth or temperature or 
Okay, wait, let me, I think I have an email about it. Let me try and see if I can find it. We get that instrument calibrated every year, so it should be within spec, but that doesn't take into account environmental stuff, I suppose. Thanks. Yeah. I wonder why our Grafana is not working on the web page. It's weird. I tried on mobile. I, I just, we have a step in, but I just bumped up the transfer speed. It's uh, quite flattened out for a little bit. Okay, so um, the corrected value, okay, wait, Hercules can detect oxygen using an Andera 383002 op op optode sensor. Um, and then their corrections to the value that come out of the sensor that the data team and RO team determined. Oh. So I think it's the data team at OET determines. Okay, um, roger. The correction. It's based on my Seeking Space Rocks artwork. Uh, they would suggest that we're all sea stars in our own way. Oh, we are all sea stars. You're a sea star too for watching our lives and participating. They're all exploring together. Looks like Grafana is working for fireworks, fire, Firefox. It didn't work for me on my on mobile or on Safari. We'll we'll have it looked at later on. Um, have we ever found wreckage from ships or planes? Certainly. Sometimes we go looking for it specifically. Uh, at the beginning of the season, we had a um, expedition in the Great Lakes looking at sunken ships. Oh, yeah, I see what happened to the Grafana. It, yeah, that's a web design issue. How did that happen? Looks like you have to click on the far right of the of the box right now. We will get that fixed.
Which sponge are you more interested in? Left or right? Um, you can only pick one. Oh, yeah. I can only pick one? Um, I'll go, go for the right one. Okay. Because we're going at such an amazing speed, we can never get both. <laughs> yeah, well, you can only pick one to look at first. I see four different sponges right now. What? Hmm. I'll use my counter. There's one here, one here, one here, one here. <laughs> that counter's pretty sweet. <laughs> I should really try that Telestrator out so I know what's going on with it. It's lovely. All right. We're going to try and get both sponges. Go ahead and do a speed zoom if you want. So that this is a polyopagon. Cool. And then let's go to the other one now. And this one is a regadrella. Traffic cone. I think it looks more like a hat. I would totally wear it as a hat. It's like the sorting hat from Harry Potter. Yeah. <laughs> you zoom in the sorting hat? <laughs> <laughs> oh, bunk. Cool. Thank you. Can we look at... Five, 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 five. <laughs> yes. I loved how the it, it just sort of dragged the number around. That was great. So I, I would consider this like a sort of a sparse-ish brancher. Is that considered nodal or internodal? It looks internodal. So even the internodal ones are just after the node. Mm -hmm. This one like, like has really long bones. Long bones. Can you zoom in on the long bones, please? Yeah, so there's a branch right after. It's only considered nodal when the, the, the node is like... Like right at the yeah, branch. Yeah, right at the branch. Where it's like dissecting the branch. And then you have all his branches right there. I, I feel like I'm in drawing mode. I'm going to switch to the draw tool. Yes. <laughs> the, the circle um, is, is a little, little crazy. I feel like the blue circle is my least favorite. Yeah. It's quick, though. It, yeah, it's quick. You, all you have to do is like tap the screen and the circle appears. But the size of the circle changes. It's really hard to get it exactly where you want. Go here is definitely my favorite function. Ooh, where's this going? Oh, oh no, I lost oh. it. <laughs> Thanks. It's like totally straight the whole way and it has a little question mark ending. Yep. <laughs> So Coralie, do you know how long ago this area was volcanically active? Is there any evidence right. of volcanic gases being released up. now? Um, no, uh, it, it was active a long time ago. Um, you can tell if it was recent magmatic activity by the presence of hydrothermal vents and stuff like that, but there are none. Um, so we assume that these seamounts are pretty old. Is that pretty old geologically or just pretty old? I think they think they are from the Cretaceous, but I'm not, but or I'm not sure. Which is older, but it's not the oldest.
Do we have an ET sponge? <gasps> right Here's here. hoping. Ooh, look at that weird circle. That was a cool shape. It was a goldfish that we didn't finish. Goldfish. Smack <laughs> that smiles back. Mm -hmm. Can you zoom in on the, this oh, thing? Maybe I can get it to have a Please. smile. Hey. <laughs> Look at that E.T. sponge. Advena Magnifica, the magnificent alien. This is a glass sponge in the family Euplectility. It's one of like our- Like getting the lasers right in the eyes. I know, you're bonding not, it. <clears throat> one of our stocked sponges. Yeah, so oh, there was one dive I was annotating where there's like a whole family of these guys and they're all staring at you. It's like their eyes were following you. <laughs> That's creepy. It was it was a little creepy. These lasers are 10 centimeters apart, so you can tell about how large that sponge is. So we had a question actually in one of the interactions uh, yesterday. So the sponges that are like their opening is facing more sideways like that. Mm -hmm. Does that help with the filtering process or is it just how they are? Because like to me it looks like kind of like a windsock, you know, like, a, like the Yeah, or... yeah. So like when you're up on a sponge like that, you can see that the, the sponge head can move a little bit. And I think uh, if the current was coming from a slightly different direction, it would be able to funnel through the head of the sponge. You'd think more of them would be oriented that way if it would be helpful. So a lot of times these animals orient themselves perpendicular to the current so they get more current flow past them. But the current does change direction on you occasionally so um, usually the, the direction that they face is going to be in the Yeah, so um, the, um, the the general currents in the area, the way that they're usually going uh, will be reflected in the way that the corals or sponges it might be facing, uh, which might not reflect what the current is at the time that we are here because that's just one little snapshot in time and currents do change. Um, the only way to really get a good sense of what the current is like down here is to put down a logger for a long period of time, uh, maybe about a year, to, to gather current data information. You mean to get the current current? Yeah, to get the current current. Well, What's we, this little we, guy? We can get the current current. Zoom in, please. But that might not be the actual. A black coral, zoom, maybe? maybe? You are right. This is a black coral called Staropathies. It looks similar to bathypathies, but you'll notice that it has some branching at the ends of the um, branches. Branch branches. Branch branching branches. Oops. Rock question, could these seamounts become active again? Um, anything's possible, mm. but no. <laughs> <laughs> That's a great answer. <laughs> uh, you need, so to get, to get like a seamount out here, you would need a mantle plume to do that. And for a mantle plume to appear perfectly under these seamounts. I just don't anticipate that happening. And it would probably have to form over millions of years. And by the time that happened, these would have moved to a different place in the ocean. Now what are the odds that the plume would like spread up right in the middle of the seamount that it once like created a million years ago? Yeah. yeah. So these seamounts, when they were created, were created somewhere else in the ocean and then moved to the location we see them at This now. rock, this rock's a beautiful looking patterns on that yeah very you can do cool. a quick zoom on this thing and then i'll have to go i think this might be a black coral whoops looks like a lot of antipathies cool tiny barnacles. sorry 
Whoa. And, oh, yeah. Lots of little oh. tiny barnacles on that rock. Yeah. All right. I'm going to go. I keep getting sucked up the hill. I want like you to be sucked up the hill, though. Yeah. Be like, ooh, so. this looks like the fun way to go. Oh, I'm falling behind. Ooh, this looks like a fun way to go. Oh, well, rats. Let's, let's support you getting sucked up the hill. How much more of a move do you need uphill? I think the the move you just put in will do. Okay. Do the trick. And it's a cool ledge there, though. Yeah. The totally. end of the world is right there. This is the end of the world. Don't go that way. Never wanna, go that way. I don't want to go that way. It's enticing. A siren song of the end of the world. <laughs> Look at all this end of the world animals. <laughs> this is good. Yeah, maybe we do want to go that way. Maybe that's even better than a ridge. Here we got Walteria sponge. Got some bamboo coral. Branched and unbranched. Little bath pathies hanging out. Some really big bamboo coral colonies. With the sponge right in the middle of it. Look at that oh, thing. Oh, yeah. That's cool. cool. Nice regadrella sponge. And we're back to seeing all those little Rumilla Gorgia militaris. That I'll have to count. Can we see this little sponge? Yeah, I think so. Can you please zoom in there? Oh, it's pretty cute. It is cute. Okay, thank you. Come on. So that was a little glass sponge. It looks like it could be a euplectelid, maybe related to that uh, little pot belly sponge that we were saw on one of the other rocks. Do you want me to hold still? This person says they watch Nautilus Live to stay up to date on current events. Oh, yes. I suggest everyone does, so. Science Row, we're just going to ditch a weight plate to get a little bit more. Boy, Ancy. Sounds good. Nice. Mm hmm. What's that? Okay. So this person is thinking there are no fish or any five zero meter zero five five or any kind of deep sea vertebrates existing down there. Why? Well, there are, aren't there? We see plenty of fish, right? Oh yeah, we were seeing tons of fish uh, last night. We haven't seen too many recently, but that could be because we were distracted by corals. <laughs> yep, so there's plenty of fish in the deep sea, although to me, they all look pretty eel-shaped. Yeah, eel-like shapes are pretty common. Um, you don't really see very 
standard fishy looking fish down here just because that eel like body form makes for more efficient swimming and it's good to be efficient um, when there isn't a lot of food around so if you are using a lot of energy that means you're going to need more food that's why you feel really hungry if you work out a lot oh can we look at this sort of brown one Okay, it is a black coral. It looks like a Staropathes, um, but it's sort of a, a brown form. We were seeing more yellow before, so that's kind of interesting. Uh, and then also on this rock, we've got some Chrysogorgia. We've got uh, Zoanthids covering uh, probably an old bamboo um, skeleton and bamboo coral. Looks fun-ish. I'm seeing a lot of big sponges, a lot of those regadrellas, a lot of polyopagons. Now that the terrain is it's very bouldery, definitely see a lot more things. Bio question. Seems like corals and sponges tend to be found together. Is there any reason for this? Are they somehow symbiotic? Um, no, they're not. They're not symbiotic. Uh, but yeah, they they do seem to be found together. That's why we describe the community as a coral and sponge community, um, and that's mainly because the corals and sponges are doing similar jobs. They're providing habitat and structure in the deep sea benthic environment. Um, and they are filter feeders. So they do similar similar jobs um, and they, because they're doing similar jobs in the same area, that's where we're seeing them together. So they like similar environments, um, high current environments where there's lots of food to filter. Um, they have similar tactics to for feeding. Um, they like hard substrates and that's why we see them together. Birds of a feather flock together. Mm -hmm. Oh, great question. Since you're going to be doing a lot of this soon, what software do you use to annotate the videos? So I use uh, Bars, which was developed by um, MBARI, which is the Monterey uh, Institute of Marine uh, I want to look it up. Yeah, I got, uh, <laughs> I'm so bad thank at you, acronyms. Uh, <laughs> so, uh, as far as is the video annotation system. It's the Monterey Bay Aquarium yeah. Research Institute. So, yeah, I was like, Monterey Bay Research something. something, something. Yeah. What does MARS stand for? MARS stands for Video oh, Annotation uh, Reference System. Ah. Vars. Vars. Uh, there are other uh, annotation softwares out there. Um, some people have been using Squiddle. Uh, oh. Yeah, it's, it's a really cute name. Um, there, there are a couple. Uh, there's one that uh, I recently used called Tater. Tater. Yeah. So like, <laughs> like an potato. Like, like oh, potato. Oh, like, okay, or I get annotator. Okay. Annotator. Tater. <laughs> oh. It's okay, I went straight potato, too. Oh, oh, yeah, I totally want some potatoes. What's taters precious? Oh, there's always tater tots for breakfast. Always tater tots. Uh, so I'm going to skip real quick. Uh, the Yoda was sampled uh, at 4, a little after uh, 8 p.m. last night. They're wanting to track back in the video and see it if they can. So, like, around 8 p.m. last night. Mm -hmm. At Hawaiian Standard Time, if that helps you. Um, are there alternatives? Oh, so this is an ROV question. Do we have time for that? Yeah. Um, what are the alternatives to buoyancy control with weight plates, if any? Uh, well, 
I'm not too familiar with it, but let's talk about what Alvin does. Alvin has a variable ballast system that uses mercury somehow. Oh. And more info I do not have, but it also <laughs> uses weights. Um, I think submarines use compressed air. I could be wrong about that, like uh, Navy subs. But honestly, I don't know. We just use weight because it's, you know, environmentally friendly and cheap. Have exposed fossils been found? Well, we found that beaked whale skull. Was that a fossil? We all look to Coralie. I, <laughs> I, I looked to the wall. <laughs> I, uh, I think it depends, like, how you define a fossil, but what I found online was that if it's, like, older than 10,000 years, it's considered a fossil. And since that had uh, the paramanganese crust on it, yeah, we can so see that a fossil. How did that sponge turn out yesterday? Oh, the the dead sponge? Yeah. Um, stinky. <laughs> mm. More uh, or less than expected. Um, about as much as I expected, but we'll see when we go down to the lab later. Uh, how how smelly it got? Why does it get smelly? Because there's a bunch of like, it it was dead and <laughs> it has lots of sediment in it and okay. like organisms cool. so I don't know so like when you have something from the beach and you dry it out and it starts to smell a little funny was it encrusted with uh, ferromanganese crust yeah it has some of that ferromanganese crust that look like on it so it was probably really old uh, had been dead for some time because that crust wouldn't form while the animal was alive it's a very. It was very, very dense. So you, you collected a bit of the base of it. Um, it was like, I don't know, thicker than your ankle. Ooh. Wow. Yeah. Um, to combine questions here, the pressure at this depth. It says, what is the actual pressure? So my calculator says, uh, two thousand nine hundred and fifty nine point eight five psi. So, um, at this kind of pressure and depth. Um, are there huge fish down here, or is that, li or do they get limited by the pressure and nutrient circumstances? Zoom in there, please. Um, depends on your definition of huge. Um, you see some good-sized fish, like a little over a meter long. Um, oh, we've got a lot of black corals here. This is a uh, Trisopathes. All right, come wide, please. And then there was a yellow one. Gotta go. It's like a yellow stick. I think that was a stick of But yeah, in terms of like fish size, you're not going to see something like massive, um, like whale size, unless there are actually whales down here. But um, yeah, you get some decent sized fish at these depths. But most of what we see are, are going to be on the smaller scale of maybe a, a foot or so long, smaller. Some of the rat tails get big. Some of the um, cutthroat eels can be quite long. And if we're talking like, you know, massive 70 foot cusk eels like that. No, we're not. not 70 fine. foot? Why 70 not? foot cusk eels, it would be <laughs> like a whale. What's the biggest cusk eel ever? Um, definitely not 70 feet. Um, maybe like a meter long. One meter long? Yeah. No way. We've seen ones bigger than that. See better, bigger than a meter? Maybe, yeah. I don't know. But not two meters then? Probably not two meters. You know, someone popped in the chat. I'm not going to uh, fact check this. I'm just going to read it out. <laughs> For reference, Perfect. the PSI here is around the pressure inside a scuba tank. That's cool. That is true. 
Ooh, annotation question. Uh, when you do the annotating, do you get the full high quality uh, bitrate video or the YouTube and compressed version? Oh, no, I get the high quality. Do you like have a giant like screen that you have it on? Um, I have a 4K screen. Like theater sized? No, no, <laughs> it's just, I think it's 27 inches. Solid, solid. Yeah, I don't need it to be huge. Um, since, you know, I'm sitting at the desk, I don't want to be overwhelmed with screens. Sometimes when the screen is too big, it's hard to see everything. You don't want it too small either. But yeah, no, I definitely request the full resolution video. And so I will be leaving this cruise with a copy of that video to bring back and put on our server. Um, has anyone done any fishing on this cruise? Not that I know of. No, no, we haven't been fishing. But we did see a mahi-mahi and a tuna on our recovery yesterday. There so was a tuna? There was a tuna. Oh, I missed it. What kind of tuna? Do we know? It's a yellowfin. Oh, actually, no, I did see that. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> my brain, my poor brain. I was stuck <laughs> on the mahi-mahi. And actually, no, I remember looking that up last night. Yeah. I was like, oh, was that a yellowfin? No. Oh, that's right. I was, I was thinking, like... No, artist, you can't be identifying that right, even though this is literally the only fish that looks like this. Mm -hmm. just like, cannot possibly be. Or, you know, as we like to call them, uh, we call them ahi. Ahi tuna. Or poke. <laughs> mm, delicious. Oh, and it's Poke Friday. I really need to make that sticker. Poke Friday. Yeah. <laughs> It's going to have poke. a poke bowl with chopsticks and fried cookie on top. Already started. Nice. Can we zoom on this sponge, please? Well, here we got uh, a Faria near Oka Erecta, or the um, hamster trail sponge. <laughs> I think I see a shrimp inside there. Full of the, the hamster shrimps. <laughs> Pretty tricky, those little hamster shrimps. <laughs> Trampies. Sneak, sneaking in those little tunnels. Yep. Hanging Watch out in there. Must have. You can't ID them because they're hiding. I see your pinkness. I know you're in there. Hello. My desire to see the top of this ridge is just not being met. No. <laughs> <laughs> I keep trying and we're like, keep going up. That's a cool rock. Oh, that's a big rock. A nice rock. There's no ridge, there's just one big rock. One giant rock. So these sponges, um, do most of them not have common names? Um, no, no, they don't really have common names. Um, and the, the common names that we've been shouting out are things that have been made up and not really agreed like upon. Right now. by the Yeah, just like just right now. <laughs> or uh, on previous cruises, because, you know, someone shouted what they there's thought it looked like. We just Where? drove over a fish. Oh, I drove over him. Oh, no. Never look back. Not, not like not over. Him. He's yeah, not like just, over, over. Just, just, just passing just gently right by. <laughs> it's not, not a road down kill that fish. fish. It's, it's just an yeah. under the bridge Die fish. kill yeah. fish. Yeah, because I'm, I'm doodling over here what we're seeing. And like, it's very hard to Google, I must say. <laughs> oh, yeah. No, uh. These sponges are, are not easy Googleables. Uh, if you spell them right, usually <laughs> images from the animal guide will pop up, but they're not easy to spell. So yeah. I'm leaning heavily on the animal guide. Where can we find that? So you can find an animal guide at uh, 
oceanexplorer.noaa.gov. Um, that is noaa.gov. Uh, this is an animal guide that I helped develop. Um, there's another animal guide on the HURL archive. That's the Hawaii Undersea Research Laboratory Archive. Um, that is a website that I designed and um, manage. And you guys sell shirts, right? Uh, no, uh, we don't <laughs> sell HURL shirts anymore. <laughs> anymore? Have some, Wait. <laughs> yeah. Well, well, when, when HURL was still a thing, so the Hawaii Undersea Research Laboratory uh, was really big for you know a little over 30 years um, exploring the Hawaiian waters and Pacific the Pacific um, they had two submersibles the Pisces 4 and the Pisces 5 uh, for a little while um, had an ROV called the RCV 150 sure yeah um, and then before right. that there was the Makali'i submarine and uh, you can you can actually see the makali if you are on maui and go to the maui ocean center good morning yeah so um that was sort of the the hawaii undersea research laboratory was what really started some of this deep exploration in Hawaii. Uh, but their last cruise was in 2017. Forever? Their last cruise forever? Yeah, last cruise forever. Oh my gosh. And we definitely need shirts. We need like commemorative shirts. I don't think we have any more shirts. I think Steve gave them all away. Steve? Yeah. Uh -huh. Steve Price, he, he is our, our shirt. Manager. Shirt distributor. Yeah, shirt distributor. Nice. A peddler of various swags. Mm -hmm. But we now have Luukai shirts for the ROV Luukai that is operated by the University of Hawaii. And uh, I recently designed a shirt design, and they sold it all out on our last cruise. Nice. Yeah, so that was pretty cool. It's a nice chunky sponge. It is a big chunky sponge. It is like the thickest polyopagon. It looks like two. Is it two? Or is it just one really big one? One sponge is trash, is another sponge is meal? <laughs> Seems like an odd decision. Yeah, no, I think I think this is two sponges really close together. Yeah, why would they ever? What? Why would you do that? I don't know. Love. But they st right, they probably started growing at the same time, and it at what felt like a uh, far apart. Uh, but now that they're all big, so stubborn. Yeah, they're close together. Um, a couple questions here. Um, we're seeing little evidence of human debris. Is this a particularly clean area? I, yeah, I'm glad we're seeing little evidence of human debris. Um, the further, more remote you get and less uh, trafficked areas, uh, the less trash I would expect to see. I would love to see no trash at all. Um, and the follow-up is, uh, what is planned after the current project? Um, Christmas. Christmas. This is our last uh, last uh, expedition years. for the season. Yep. And next year we'll still be in Hawaii. One month to next season. Yep. That's Everybody will get their little brief holiday and uh, we'll get be right back at it. Oh, Anthemestus Tahi Notice. What do those words mean? Uh, <laughs> so there is an anthemastis, a, a mushroom coral, but it has a really long body. And so that's anthemastis tachinotis. Oh, okay. We just must have passed over it? Yeah, we, we flew by it real fast. Real fast. I didn't even have time to like scribble it on the screen <laughs> before it was gone. Corally rock question. Are all the rocks that we are seeing basalt rocks? Um, so basalt is underneath the ferromanganese crust, and then on top of it, you get the ferromanganese crust, which is the black part, and then there's, like, a layer, I've been saying a dusting, 
of sediment on top of that. Whenever you say a dusting of sediment, you, uh, I, I feel like you know I'm watching like a meteorologist. <laughs> I have a dusting of sediment. <laughs> you present it so nicely. Oh, well, I think of powdered sugar. Yeah, confectionery sugar or whatever. Yeah. Totally. And a dusting of. Slightly dust of uh, beignets. Oh, now I want some lemon squares. Oh, oh yeah, I could go for lemon squares. A dusting of shaved coconut. Uh -huh. Oh, right. the oh. question for the marine biologist, the difference between a sea slug and a sea sponge. Well, a slug a and a sponge? There. Yeah, it's a there. big difference there. there. Yeah, those are very different things. Um, so sea slugs would uh, be in the mollusca. So they are mollusks, uh, gastropods. Um, would be more closely related to snails. Uh, sponges are also animals, but they are in the phylum Periphera, and uh, they are a sessile organism. So that means that they stay in one place, whereas uh, a sea slug would be more mobile and moving all over the place. Those are just a few of the differences between uh, sea slugs and sea sponges. How about a difference between a cucumber and a pig, uh, like a sea cucumber, sea pig? Mm. Uh, bacon from a land pa pig tastes delicious. <laughs> uh, bacon from a sea pig, not so much. No. Uh, oh, it looks like we have a class tuning it. So we've got a bunch of student questions that we're going to have to take uh, one after another here. Um, there was one I was going to ask first. Hang on. Oh, yeah. Before we do that, um, do sponges have genders? Do they have genders? Um, or I should say sexes. Yes. So they, they release gametes. Um, so you'll have a female that releases the female gametes and the male that releases the spermatozoa. Uh, and, and those will uh, meet up in the water column. So the question was because we have the those two sponges in love. So they were saying, like, is one the male and one the female? I mean, maybe. Yeah. Uh, I can't sex a sponge by looking at it. So, no, I wouldn't. I wouldn't know uh, what their genders are. Oh, the the question about the sponge. They meant a uh, sea slug and a sea Where? cucumber. Okay, uh, still two different yeah. phyla. Sea slugs are in the mollusca. Uh, they are gastropods. Uh, sea cucumbers are in the Echinodermata, uh, so and in the Holothuroidea. So they are very different. Um, they might have similar ways of going about their lives, having that sort of long, elongate, uh, squishy body form, feeding on sediment, but they are very genetically different. Fish. Fish. Are you a fish? Fish, you can zoom in on fish when you got fish, it. Fish, fish. This is a cuskiel. Hey, buddy. It looks like a bazazetus. Yes, a bazazetus. It's somewhere to be. Okay. So it's a type, type of cuskiel. So it looks like we've got a fifth grade class tuning in. Hello. Uh, so these are there's a handful of questions, so we'll probably just have to like. So I guess I'll have to see if I'm smarter than a fifth grader. Let's do it. Like bang, bang, bang. So, uh, what is the largest sponge we've ever found? Wasn't it in the Papahanaumokuakea Seamount? Marine yeah. National Monument, I should say, sorry. Yeah, it was in the Papahanaumokuakea Marine National Monument. It was on a seamount within the monument boundaries. And it was about the size of a minivan. Wow. Did we ever get like official measurements on that? Did someone take the screen grabs and scale it? What's that thing? Um, well, we kind of ended up just comparing it oh. to the Deep Discover ROV. Just sort of, it was like at least three of them. It was very large. Oh, there's another fish. Another fish. I think that was a rat tail. Student question: How long does it take the ROV to charge? Is the ROV battery powered? It's not battery powered, so it does not charge. It's connected to a cable, right? So it's uh, diesel power? It's powered by the electricity coming from the ship, which is generated from diesel generators, yeah. Awesome. So the diesel burns on the ship, 
and makes electricity, which goes down the cable. Excellent. Um, are those all corals on the ground? We've been seeing a mix of corals, sponges, fish. And that red uh, organism that's just going by is a crinoid. It's a stock crinoid or a sea lily is its common name. Student question, have we ever seen a hydrothermal vent? I personally? Uh, uh, yep. Yes, we've seen hydrothermal vents. We are not going to see one here. Well. What do all of these creatures in the deep eat? So that depends on the creature, but the corals and sponges that we see are filter feeders. So they are eating things that are floating in the water, uh, what we would like to call marine snow. So you might see little particles floating by. That's what they are eating. All right. I'll sit here for a sec. Sure. Animals like those fish you're like are trying to line likely it up. feeding like, well on um, <laughs> things like it. small crustaceans, <laughs> maybe other small fish. Um, how old is the ROV? All right, you're great. You're coming up to 20 years. Really? Both of them? Argus was commissioned in 2001 and Hurricane in 2003. Yeah. I think. Something like that. Young adults There's another now. Fish. Yeah, her can vote. <laughs> um, are we in the ROV? Uh, if you look at the quad feed, so you can see four different screens, um, you can see where we are. It would be awesome if the inside of an ROV was this spacious, right? <laughs> but uh, no, we are on the ship and uh, we, we are please? getting video from the remote operated vehicle. That's why it's remote operated, because we don't have to be in it to operate it. All right, we are looking at a sea cucumber called Hansenothuria. And then there's a little urchin. That looks like an aspidodiadema. So urchins and sea cucumbers are in the same phylum, Econodermata. Even though they look very different, they're more similar to each other than we are to them. Another student question. Wait, what? How? But how? <laughs> but how? I was about to ask a student question. No, you know what? I'm going to ask it first because they're going to leave soon. Um, are there, we're not looking at hydrothermal vents right now, but are there specific life forms around the hydrothermal vents that you don't see anywhere else? Oh, absolutely. Um, there are, are specific types of snails and shrimps and crabs Oof. that are only ever seen around hydrothermal vents. Um, there worms. are the tube worms. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, animals that live at hydrothermal vents are Zoom particularly in, adapted to living in that environment. Um, ooh, and as oh. we're zooming in on this fish, it has a little isopod parasite on its head, a little isopod hat. Mm. Uh, student That'd question. be so itchy. <laughs> what are we looking for in this expedition? We are exploring. These are seamounts that nobody has explored before, so these... What you're seeing is the first time we have ever seen this area of the deep sea. Um, so we are just exploring to see what's here. Uh, we are also looking at some of the rocks, uh, trying to see where these sea mounts came from and how old they might be. Um, have we discovered any new life forms? So uh, it's hard to say because uh, our fabulous marine biologist Megan can say, oh my gosh, I've never seen that before. And all the scientists watching can say, I've never seen that before. But um, then we have to collect it and study it and then 